Now, Roma Wines present... Suspense! Tonight, Dateline Lisbon, starring John Hodiak. Suspense is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you... Suspense! This is the man in black here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, who tonight from Hollywood bring you as star, the rising new film personality whose performance you admired in Lifeboat and whom you will soon be seeing co-starring with Lana Turner in MGM's Marriage is a Private Affair, Mr. John Hodiak. For our suspense play this evening, we ask you to project time into the not-too-distant future. And so with Dateline Lisbon and with the performance of John Hodiak as William Baldwin... We again hope to keep you in suspense. <clears throat> Your name? William Baldwin. Occupation? I uh, was a foreign correspondent. At the time, that is, of the murder with which you were charged? Around that time, yes. I see. Now, Mr. Baldwin, would you be good enough to tell the court where you were on October the 5th, 1944? I was in Lisbon, Portugal. Oh, can't you be more specific? Look, when you say I was in Lisbon during the invasion, you've told most of your story right there. You know the place. Yes, we know it. I should say that at one time or another during the course of the war, most of us here had occasion to pass through that port. That was the big way station, all right. The neutral terminal for the boys who worked for the Allies, and those lined up with the Axis. You'd see a crowd from the Soviet anxious to get back to the Eastern Front and the sound of the Internationale. You'd see right behind them maybe a delegation of Nazis... Glad to be away from any front and sick of the horsed whistle song. The lads from London, with their briefcases and striped trousers and rule Britannia very clear in their ears, they were there too. So were the guys from Warsaw. Their clothes getting a little threadbare, but the Polonaise sounding as fresh and strong as it did four years before. And the French, not the Vichyites, but the ones who might be at the very next table, the free ones, who never stopped hearing La Marseillaise. Brass hats, underground agents, refugees, and heels. That was Lisbon. It was about five or six in the evening when I walked into the lobby of the Hotel de Gama. You know the place, right in the center of town. Anyway, I happened to glance up and I saw this girl standing about midway on that big marble staircase that leads down from the mezzanine. She had a Leica camera up to her face and was drawing a bead on the whole lobby. Oh, no! Pare, senorita! Suddenly, a little fella yelled up to her to stop. And as he did, a fat guy standing at the desk whipped around. He spotted the girl, too. The next second, he was the scaredest-looking character I'd ever seen. He whirled back away from the camera, but she'd already clicked the shutter. And then, in another second, I got a shock myself. The girl lowered the camera from her face and... Yeah, it had to be her. She came down the staircase, winding up the film in the Leica, then started across the lobby, and I was sure it was Terry. I hadn't seen her since I'd left New York, but you couldn't mistake that stride, not even after all those years. I walked across the lobby to her, but the little guy, the one who'd yelled, had a head start. <laughs> if you say so, senor, but I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. Oh, America. Oh, 3,000 pardons, ah. Uh... Mrs. <laughs> I simply wish to apologize for my outburst. Clearly it was the... Outbursts? I... I'm sorry, senor, but I don't get it even in English. It was when you were on the staircase. He yelled at you. At me? But what on earth for? I, I don't think he wanted you to take that picture. Are you serious? Why should he... No. Hello, Terry. Bill Baldwin. It must be... Twelve years. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I meant since I've even heard about you. I've heard about you, though. 
You've been doing all right. Oh, I've been busy. Terry Moore covers the Burma front. Terry Moore turns candid camera on allied leaders. Terry Moore shoots Parade Magazine Picture of the Week. You've been getting more publicity than Hitler. Oh, I work for a better concern. Bill, what on earth are you doing here? There's so much I, I want to know. Uh, we're being rude to your little friend. Oh, oh excuse me, senor. Uh, you objected to my taking the picture? Oh, no, missus. Uh, not at all. Uh, that is the point I wish to clear up. Oh, permit me. I am Don Luis Ferdinand de Sanchez Jesus de la Castellano y Cristobal, uh, the third. <laughs> How do you do? Uh, but my friends call me Mosca. Mm, I can understand why. Yes. Uh, Mrs., I, I should very much like to uh, buy that picture. Buy it? Uh, precisely. Well, that won't be necessary. I happen to have a developing outfit upstairs in my room. I'll run you off a copy myself. That's in case you can't wait until you see it in the magazine. The magazine? Th th this picture you took will be published? Oh, yes. Simply a shot to display the, well, the color of the city, the hotel. Oh, I see, Mrs. Uh, this may at first appear to be a somewhat extraordinary request, but uh, uh, the fact is I'm a great admirer of your work, oh. and I wondered if perhaps... You could have the original, the negative. Well... Yes, senor, I, I did have that in mind. Oh, do not be concerned. I'm quite prepared to go as high as, uh, let us say, uh, $5,000 in cash. Oh, oh come now. Well, then let us say ten. What is this, a rib? Ri no, missus. It is an offer. $10,000? You know something, senor? You're insane. But I'm not, and I'll take it. Wait a second, Terry. I don't think I'd do that. Forgive me, but my proposition is with the missus only. <laughs> you couldn't have put it more plainly. Now, listen, you don't think he wants to pay a silly price like that for just a good view of the lobby? He could get that on one of those penny postcards around here. I don't care what he wants it for. All I yeah, know is... Yeah, you don't care what he wants it for because you don't even know what's in it. For all you know, you've got the hottest picture of your whole career right in that camera of yours. Uh, missus, it is necessary that we complete the trade without any further discussion. Mm, $10,000 in exchange for the negative. That is correct. If you don't mind, senor, perhaps I had better think it over a while. Oh, I'm afraid that will not be possible. The offer is good only now. Then, uh, adios, senor. Ah, uh -huh. well, let us trust you are making no mistake... Hasta la vista, Mrs. Buenas noches, senor. Well, was that stupid enough to suit you? Ten thousand dollars right down the drain. How'd you like to make fifty? What? I said, how'd you like to make fifty thousand dollars? Huh? There's another guy around here who'd go for that negative. A fat fella. He was standing over there by the desk, right in the center of your camera when you clicked the shutter. I never saw I any... did. I saw him try to dodge. From where I was standing, it looked like a $50,000 dodge, too. Why, you <laughs> You were holding out for a bigger price, a bigger cut for you, I suppose. Uh, do you believe that? Uh, oh, I don't know. After all, I have much to go on, have I? Twelve years is a long time. How, how do I know what you're like now, what you've become? I mentioned the fat man, Terry, because I think that picture's more important than you'll be willing to believe. Bill, listen to me. I want to know what happened to you. Your articles, your pieces about Europe, they just stopped. So did your letters. Well, there's something you've got to understand, Terry. Short pardon, please. Senorita Moore? Yes, I'm Terry Moore. Yes, you are wanted at the front desk, please. The front desk? For what? I do not know, Senorita. If you will follow me. Want me to hold your camera? Uh -huh. Thanks, but I think I'd feel better taking care of it myself. <laughs> okay, Terry. Hurry back. I'll be right here waiting for you. I'd been standing there about a minute, gentlemen, when I looked up and saw the fat guy. He stepped out of one of the lobby phone booths and headed for the cocktail lounge. I didn't want to lose track of him, so I followed. Pretty soon out came Terry. She had a funny look on her face. Okay, so you're right, and I hope you're satisfied. What happened? Get a better offer? Yes, my life. Your life? In return for leaving my camera on the third floor fire escape within the next 20 minutes, I shall be permitted to go on living. Otherwise... No, don't sit down. Who told you all that? I don't know. That's a silly remark. You don't know. The call was waiting for me at the desk. It was somebody at the other end of the telephone. Oh. Excuse me. My friend. You at the table. <laughs> Stone deaf. And then fish door. You stop and see? Well, how did you learn to speak? Yeah. Yeah, boy. Mind if we join you? Thou, ich spreche kein English. Sound like the voice on the telephone? 
How can I tell if he doesn't speak English? What did he say? He said he doesn't speak English. Oh. Wait a second. Excuse me, pal, but I'd like you to meet the young lady you talked to on the phone. She. Uh... Ja, können Sie denn nicht sehen, dass ich beschäftigt bin? Uh, you better bin. speak English. Every time she hears German, she goes to pieces. Creates a terrific scene. You will be good enough to leave me alone. I do not wish your company. Thank you. What about that theory? I- I'm pretty sure that's it. Good. Have a seat. Oh, that's all right. Don't get up here. Uh, uh, I don't believe I caught your name. Now look, if you do not leave at once, I shall call the manager. Well, I'll be glad to do it for you. You know, my friend, now that I've got a good look at you, I can't help feeling I've seen you before somewhere. Yes. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Gnidius Fräulein, you are very much mistaken. Oh, not with photographs, I'm not. I've studied too many of them. And that's where I've seen you, in a photograph. Now, let me tell you something. You have never seen me before. That is my advice to you. Except that there's something different. Mm, The clothes, I think. The white collar... Yes. You're right, Terry. The civilian clothes. I've got them spotted, too. And not in a photograph. I'm going by a man I've seen a hundred times. At the head of a parade, on a dais in the public square. In the back seat of an open touring car with guards on either side. You are a fool. I tell you for a fact. You are a fool. You see, I used to cover Poland for a number of American papers. And you granted me an interview once. Bill, he isn't... The the... general? Yes. General von Klaus, one of the most prolific executioners a few ever had. (sighs) What stupid people you must be. Why did you not stop when I advised you? Don't you see? There is nothing I can do now except uh, take the Fräulein's camera and kill the two of you. Look, I happen to have a gun, too, so you can put that thing away. Anyway, you're not crazy enough to kill us here. Uh, No, senor. He is not that crazy. Mosca. You will please put away the gun. But I must insist. You will put the gun out of sight. So, you will now follow me from this room. No. No, I will not leave these people and permit them to... Why? Do you want to bring everyone to this table? Do you wish a special spotlight for yourself? Now listen to me. I am the one in danger. I am the one in charge. You will do as I tell you to do. Or you won't get him out of Europe. You see? You see, he knows. All right, all right, all right. Shut him out. What are you charging him, Mosca? Every cent he ever stole? (laughs) It's worth it, you know. If the Poles knew this character was here, they'd tear him limb from limb. <laughs> you talk a great deal, senor. Von Klaus, you will please get up from the chair. Ah. You must understand that nothing can be accomplished so long as we are here. We shall continue our negotiations with these charming people at some other time and place. At the German embassy, let's say? Oh, nein, nein, nein. <laughs> How would you like that, Herr General? <laughs> My friends, you first must get to the embassy. <laughs> Again, Mrs. Hasta la vista, and adios, senor. The German embassy, Bill. But he's a Nazi, a big one. That's right, and he's also taking it on the land. The final squeeze is about to begin, and the general deserting his post. The Germans would kill him as soon as the Poles. Yes, that's why he can't afford to have us talk. And Mosca can't afford to lose his fee. Bill, what'll we do? You heard what he said. They'll be watching every exit for the rest of the night. Good. Meanwhile, we'll go dancing. Dancing? Yeah. Cross the floor to that door on the other side of the band. And we're going to slip through that door, up the service stairs, and into your room. My room? That's right. And you're going to develop the general's picture. Tonight, for suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you a star, Mr. John Hodiak, whom you have heard in the prologue to Dateline Lisbon by Harold Medford. Tonight's tale of suspense. Yes, it is true that our own wonderful vineyard country in California produces, in Roma, wines that discriminating people in many foreign lands esteem as an imported delicacy. Yet you here at home can enjoy these distinguished Roma wines for mere pennies a glassful. Daily, with your meals, or when entertaining, or any time, you can delight yourself and your guests with the wonderful taste that comes from age-old winemaking traditions perfected by modern knowledge. For a treat you are certain to enjoy, place on the table with dinner tomorrow night a cool bottle of hearty, 
rich red Roma California Burgundy. It doesn't matter what the meal is or what kind of glasses you use to serve Roma. It's good in any glass with any meal. Your family, your guests, will find new pleasure in even the simplest foods. For Roma wine makes any meal a feast at only pennies a glass. Try it yourself tomorrow. Ask your dealer for R-O-M-A, Roma wine. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Mr. John Hodiak as William Baldwin, a man on trial before a jury of his peers in Dateline, Lisbon. A tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. You were testifying, Mr. Baldwin, uh, that you and the young lady started up for a room. That's right. The rear way. Up the service stairs. I see. Mr. Baldwin, since you've already admitted the murder, are you sure that there's need for such detail? Well, I wanted you to have your record straight. There isn't much more of it, though. Very well. And so you got the girl up to her room, eh? Yes. I remember very clearly. We stepped into her room. I shoved the bolt across the door. She switched on the light. And she went straight for her developing stuff. A tray, an MQ tube, the hypo, the usual paraphernalia went to work. I knew what was in her mind. She was going to develop that picture and get out of there as fast as she possibly could. She was scared, I guess. Then while I stood there watching her, she stopped. And for about half a minute, stared into space. Bill. What is it, Terry? You haven't said anything about uh, going home, going back to America. You've been over here so long, I... Yeah. Say, uh, you'll want those lights off when you start to develop that thing, won't you? Yes. Well, give me the signal when you're ready, huh? I think I'm ready now. Okay. Bill, there's something I've got to... What's that? What's what? That noise, then. Oh, I was just trying the door to be sure it was locked. <laughs> a little jumpy, aren't you? I wouldn't be. There's not a soul who can get to you, Terry. So just relax. Uh, you were asking me something. Yes, Bill. What are you doing here? In Lisbon? Yes. I'm waiting. I've been waiting for months. You mean to get home? I can't go back to America, Terry. I'm on the list. I was surprised you didn't know that. Oh, no. Yeah, I've been waiting for a chance to escape. Your hunch is right. I stayed over here too long. I lost the feel of my country and the sense of what she was. And when I got around to repatriating the correspondence, I elected to stay behind. I'd been inoculated, Terry. I had the germ. So help me, I went for that spiel about the new order of things. But you could... You don't mean you worked for them. I worked for them. There were a thousand things a guy in my position could help them with. And now that the heat's on, now that the walls are beginning to melt, you're making your getaway. That's right. Before the courts come to session and the sentences are handed out. A traitor and a coward. You and Von Klaus, you're cowards, both of you. You're two of a kind. Yeah, we ought to make fine traveling companions. South America, I imagine. Oh, uh, he and Mosca don't know it yet, but that's how it's going to work. You see, the way I look at it, if Mosca can arrange an escape for Von Klaus, he can certainly arrange one for me. You've got the money to pay for it, huh? No, but I've got the picture. Your picture. If that thing's published and if the story gets out, the Senor's Underground Railroad is dead. He'll make a deal for that picture, all right. Let's not worry about that. No, Bill. You surely understand that I'm going to tell the story, every part of it. I was afraid you'd feel that way. I'll have to make sure you don't. I see. All right, but you're not going to get this. Terry, get away from that picture. The door. Somebody open the door. A Baldwin. The picture. You have it? Von Klaus. It's safe, General. And uh, put away. You'll find the light switch there by the door, left side. And Mosca. But that door was locked. How did you open it? We didn't, Mrs. We opened this door. The closet. Then you were here all the time. You were listening. Uh, we were there when you entered the room. And you've already heard my proposition. What do you say, Mosca? Is it a deal? But, uh, of course, senor, of course. And now, if you will turn over the photograph. <laughs> yes, senor. 
You get the photograph when I'm on my way with von Klaus, with the right kind of passport and tickets. Incidentally, how soon can you get me those? I'm in something of a rush. I understand, senor. Would uh, tomorrow... Let's say tonight, in about 30 minutes, in the lobby. Look, why the hesitation? It's very simple. I've got the photograph and I've got a gun. What'll it be? You... You must know the answer, senor. It is a deal. Okay. You can leave now. I've got some work to do. Very well. It shall be as you say, senor. Thirty minutes from now in the lobby. Oh, uh, in class? Now, uh, there's just one thing unsettled. Yes? The Fräulein. For the sake of the security of all, I must insist she be silenced at once. You don't have to insist. I'm taking care of it myself. Now, you understand her, Baldwin. In my present situation, I must be very sure of things. Yeah, sure. Meanwhile, I told you to clear out of here. Not till the Fräulein is silent. Don't be stupid. This isn't a time for that or the place either. We can't... Then why did you select this time, senor? And also select this place. Yeah, we heard you. Only one minute ago, preparing to shoot this girl. <sighs> then why do you delay her, Baldwin? Why do you not proceed? That gun again? Come on, General, put it away. For what reason? What does it matter whose weapon you use? And uh, why don't you make me put it away? He has no weapon. Phil. <laughs> he has no weapon. I think you better make sure. Go on, he's covered. Your arms, senor. Hold them away, so. Nothing there? <laughs> I would like you to know, Herr Baldwin, how you expected to kill the Fräulein if you did not have a gun. Very simple. He did not expect to kill her. There's nothing in that pocket. Then why did he say he was... Why? Because he heard the noise from the closet. And he knew that we were here. You remember the moment, Mrs., he said he was uh, trying the door? He knew we had guessed you would come to this room. He knew we were here to finish you both. He was playing for time. He was bluffing. And about the Nazis, about escaping. Oh, lies, a stupid fable to hold us off. Is that not so, senor? Is not everything I say the truth, huh? You're an awfully little guy to talk so big. Oh, I can't afford to talk big, senor. <laughs> I am sure now that you uh, you have no gun. <laughs> you are, huh? Mosca! Oh, what is it? What are you doing? Turn loose of him, Baldwin. Uh, I'll fire. Let go, Volk! Let's go! Let go! Just face von Klaus. Oh. There. You see, right in his hand. There's my gun, senor. Okay, General, go on and fire. No, 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 wait. Go on. And the way I'm lined up now, oh. your bullet will go straight through Moscow first. Oh, stop moving, Mo. He, he will seize the gun. He will... Oh, oh. Oh, now listen to me. I'll say to you now, Baldwin, if you do not release him in exactly five seconds, I shall shoot the Fräulein dead. Uh, go on. And meanwhile, I'll work on Moscow. It'll take more than five seconds to strangle him. Uh, and you'll have plenty of time to fire. But the chances are great you'll hit him. And he's your only means of escape. Take your hands from his throat. You're one single lifeline, von Klaus. He's the only guy who knows the ropes. And his time is running out. Now, wait. Wait, listen. We can make some arrangements. All right. All right, Von Klaus. Put your gun on the table. We'll go on from there. The gun on? Oh, your no, life's I'm... going fast, Von Klaus. The one man who can save your neck's getting pretty limp. Put your gun on the table. Whatever else you listen, money. Uh, what is your price? Uh, how much? My God, stop. Uh, there. That's on the table. Now let him go, Baldwin. Please let him go. Uh, Terry, the gun. Yes. Here, Bill. Here it is. Thanks. Uh, He'll be okay in a minute. But uh, the gun, what are you? Never mind that. It says, tell me your full name. Uh, I uh, do not understand. Answer what, the uh, question. What's your full name? Maximilian Reinhard von Klaus. Occupation? Now, uh, occupation, I said. What's your occupation? I am. Uh, I was uh, divisional commander of police for the district of Warsaw in Poland. At the time, that is, of the slaughter. The slaughter? The mass executions of May 9th in the year 1940. When your men at your order went into the homes of those who weren't cooperative enough and machine gunned the women and children. Now, wh wh what, is, what is this? You're standing trial for murder. Standing trial for... You're mad! There can be no trial. There's no judge. I'm no... the judge, von Klaus, and those two the jury. Terry Moore and Mosca. But uh, our arrangement, you said, if I put the gun on the I'd table... I'd turn loose of your little pal. Well, I did. That was our only arrangement. 
And now I want to know how you plead, guilty or not guilty, for the execution of those families. Those families? How, how would I know such families? You wouldn't know, but I would. That's been my business all these years. Gathering the names of victims. Keeping records on murderers like you. Now, Baldwin, wait. Give me a chance. A chance? Those Poles didn't even have a trial. You had them shot in cold blood without even passing sentence. But you're getting all of that, von Klaus. You're really getting the works. Now, you must understand these measures. Uh, look, I will show you. It's, it's a matter of administration. Did you or did you not have those people killed? I'm trying to explain that to you. It was military expediency, the entire procedure. It's, it's part of war. It had to be done, I tell you. In other there's... words, you're dead. Yes, but there... That's all I wanted to hear. Your verdict, Terry, what is it? No, no, please. I say the man uh, is guilty. Mosca's not able to vote right now, so I'll have to do it for him. No, no. And I say you're guilty, von Klaus. So for the crime of multiple murder, I sentence you to death. No, please. And may no. God have mercy on your soul. Ah! Gentlemen of the jury, the commission of murder has been very plainly established. So, in the case of world democracies versus the defendant William Baldwin, what will your verdict be? Your Honor, we find the defendant guilty. And direct that he be freed at once to receive the court's commendation. Thank you, gentlemen. In view of the somewhat irregular circumstances, we see no reason to dissent. There is, however, a question. We know, of course, that this Moscow has been in prison since the collapse of the Axis powers. But that picture, Mr. Baldwin, uh, Terry Moore's photograph of von Klaus, whatever became of that? Oh, well, uh, ever since we've been married, it's the one thing I don't dare mention. She's pretty touchy about it. Yes, but you did develop it finally. Oh, sure, and it was... Uh... <laughs> well, sir... The thing was just a blur. <laughs> and so closes Dateline Lisbon, starring John Hodiak. Tonight's study in... Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. If you are one who does not yet know how much and how delightfully Roma wines can add to your meals, well, let me urge you not to miss out any longer on such a treat as this. There's nothing complicated about it. Just get and serve Roma wine with meals or any time in any kind of glass you wish. Try the many different kinds of Roma wine until you find those you like best of all. Try Roma California Sherry with its wonderful nut-like flavor as an appetizer. Then, hearty Roma Burgundy, or the deliciously delicate Roma Sauterne with the meal. These superb wines make even the simplest meal a feast. Yet they cost you only pennies a glassful. Get some tomorrow. And if your dealer is temporarily out of Roma, please try again soon. Ask for R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Remember... More Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. This winter, every kind of fuel for home heating will be extremely scarce. Arrange for your fuel supply immediately. Check all your heating equipment now. If possible, protect yourself against loss of heat by seeing to proper insulation, storm sash, and weather stripping. If you don't prepare now for heavier weather, you may be in for a cold, uncomfortable winter. Next Thursday, same time, you will hear Mr. Reginald Gardner as star of Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 